And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for some more Naya Huwali. So this deck was made as, it was originally a donation deck that the goal of the deck was just to play both Huwalis and just put a deck together with the Huwalis and see if you can make it work. And ever since then, we've kind of played the same shell because it's actually worked well. We have basically green-white tokens, kind of for the most part. Yeah, basically like green-white tokens, uh, but with the two Huwalis. The thing that's a little, like, green-white tokens doesn't really play Hero of Precinct 1 usually, but so we're a Hero of Precinct 1 deck with all these gold cards. And then we have our, our two gold Planeswalkers to go along with them. Um, the Spellbreaker, <clears throat> that's the card that people ask about a lot that looks out of place, but it has been one of the best cards in the deck, and it's been a, a good reason why the deck is good. It's just, it's really, it's just an aggressive card when you need to be aggressive. If there's a, and it also helps you win, so it, it does that whenever there's, like, the battlefield's clear, and then whenever there's a, um, a stalled battlefield, Gruel Spellbreaker is actually really powerful for us because of the Trample. The Trample helps us get through. Because we have this Huatli Radiant Champion, who's minus one, can make a creature really big. Gives it plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures you control. And so if you have something with Trample, you know, we've consistently had like a 1919 Trampler with this kind of deck kind of thing. Um, the, the, the one thing I'm changing here, we have struggled against aggro decks, especially like Mono Red uh, recently. So I'm putting in a couple Cav Conclave Cavaliers in the sideboard over the Crushing Canopies. We had two Crushing Canopies before, but I thought that the... The crushing canopies, having crushing canopies and cinder vines and harpooners was just all like too much there, and we just didn't have enough against aggro. And so, uh, yeah, we're putting in a couple of these. And I think like this is a just a really strong card uh, against aggro, especially against like the red decks, like a 4 4 that usually have to use a couple burn spells to kill a 4 4, but then you get two more 2 twos along with it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this card. So. That's what we got here. Um, hey, good job, Suvisac. Way to go. It is weak to Lava Coil. Sure, it, it dies to Lava Coil, uh, but that's all right. I, the other option that we're considering there is Knight of Autumn. Knight of Autumn, three mana. It's either three mana, four, three, that gets killed by Lightning Strike and Wizard's Lightning, or it's four mana, or sorry, or it's three mana, two, one, that gains four life but then it gets killed by Chain Whirler and Firebrand after that, and then, you know, you don't really have the battlefield presence, and they can just attack you with more creatures. I, I've i never really loved Knight of Autumn for that reason against Red. Um, I think both ways, you know, like the 4-3 is a little too vulnerable, and then the 2-1 is, is just too vulnerable also. Um, so I actually think, I think this Cavalier could be better for us. Because if they don't have Lava Coil, it takes over. It's like specifically Lava Coil that's the problem. And by problem, I mean just answers it one for one. <laughs> yeah, we definitely board in Tower Defense. Tower Defense is our card that we bring in to beat Soltai. <clears throat> and also, it, it's good against... Um, good again against gates also with gates ablaze did i see lazav's sword yet oh whenever they go to the whenever i look at the picture i know i got it i gotta check for lazav's sword centaur peacemaker is another good one that's honestly that could be that could maybe be better three mana three three both players gain four life yeah i like that card too so do i go history or imara I think I, that thing has vigilance. <laughs> oh, it's an actual card from War of the Spark. Oh no, this is just a different different card that you just linked. Okay, so new sorcery. Bond of Revival. So March right now gets... 
would get three creatures. If I wait till next turn, it still gets three creatures. I'll just wait. We'll get more. We'll just play it after we play like Wally and Tristani and stuff like that. All right, so four and a black sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until your next turn. All right. That's a card. Yeah, even more reanimate stuff. There's a lot of reanimate stuff now in Standard. Okay. Yeah, you're sitting on the keyboard. There you go. That's better. All right, time to start making three threes. I'll just make a three three every single turn. Come, expect no sing mercy. the song of fame. Stop. <laughs> Everything's getting binded. The day is yours. Binded by the light. I guess maybe, I mean, I could have minus three and killed both of these. Or just minus two, killed the Danatha. Nah. I have play the Sun Petal Grove. Yeah, should play the Sun Petal Grove last turn. Get an extra token in here. If we get six more creatures, they can go block, 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 and they take two, four, six, eight, ten. All right, very lethal. They do have Danatha. They gain three life. That's 25. Still probably very lethal. Yeah, still lethal. Because that's 24 right there, and then 25. It's not very lethal. It's barely exactly lethal. Well, they block like this. It's more than lethal. They block the three biggest things. I think they go to 25 and we deal 25. No, we have Conclave Tribunals in our deck uh, to help out with like Amara and stuff. Um, we don't have any bindings, just, just tribunals. Do, 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 do. Well, I like our chances. I'm going to just hit submit. Save this.
Yeah, has Huali not, not been previewed from the last set? It's probably going to be an uncommon Planeswalker. Like, Huali's probably going to be an uncommon since Huali already has... I'm just I'm just saying this because Huali already has two Planeswalkers in standard. Or maybe... Maybe Huali's not even there on Ravnica. Maybe Huali's not one of the 37. I don't even know. Well, he should make Robo Dinos. Okay, she is there. Okay, good. All right, so she's there. So did she like just bring dinosaurs with her? Like probably not. So it's like, what is she really doing over there then? And that's why Robo Dinos. No blocks. Ow. Oh really? Huali and really? Huali and Sahili are BFFs? They're making the gear per gear per thing? That sounds like a good way to get Robo Dinos to me. I want Spellbreaker on defense still. Now let's attack. <laughs> Robo Dinos d does not sound like a very good idea. <laughs> Mecha Godzilla. Pretty good turn. Danatha. So I can deal seven right now. If I play Huali and make these not be able to block. So. I think the plan is just to cast March of the Multitudes here, untap, play Huali, say their things can't block, win the game. It's a pretty good plan. All right, and that's game. We're going to be one and one here. I'm not sure what my worst matchup with this deck is, honestly. I think we've struggled with aggro in the past. I'm 
I'm pretty excited to try out the Conclave tra uh, the Conclave Cavaliers. But we've also, you know, beaten Aggro too. You know, like we have a lot of lifelink stuff and Tristani's good and I don't this is about I can't think of any matchup that is particularly bad. Fall before me. Obviously that doesn't mean we win all the matchups or anything like that. But we'll see. We'll see if we run into anything. Maybe we won't. Maybe we're just going to go 5-0 and real quickly. Who knows? And just casually making a giant unblockable army. <laughs> Call me Nicol Bolas. Got this giant unblockable army. <laughs> yeah, we play Cosmetronic Wave. Yeah, the, the Hualis are... They're, um... They're pretty good, you know? Like, they are... They surprise people. People think they're safe, and then, nope, can't block. Six lands, March of the Multitudes. Let's try a new hand. Hmm. I guess this is our weakness. Going six lander to one lander. Why can't we have London Mulligan roll? Why can't I see one more? And see if we can keep it or not. Hey Sly, yeah, I'm I love these full art cards too. Um I mean this hand this hand has a whole lot of potential. You you say keep it, risk it. It's probably better than five, right? Because there is a lot of potential here. Oh gosh. Well, this would let me cast Hero. But we're not winning if we don't get green mana, so let's just put it on the bottom. But we would be able to, like, play our Hero on turn two, and then our other Hero on the other on turn three while we wait for, for green mana. That was the wrong land. Okay. Well, definitely glad we got rid of it. We still have our hero. Looks like we're playing against Abzan hero. Oh, I'm not using Huatli for our avatar. That's why we're getting this bad luck. We're playing the Huatli deck. Well, wow. Cry of the Carnarium. V. Rude. So if I play Spellbreaker here, they use Removal Spell and Spellbreaker. Then I'm like, uh, then Amara. Yeah, see, like, I like getting this Amara out of here. Um... Amara again. The full art cards are just, they're expensive, but they just cost money. You just get them with, you know, you just spend gems to get them. We did. I did, like, for, for an entire week, all, any, any donations that people had for a week, I put towards these. Um, so all the donation decks went towards it there. I think we price it out in gems. It's the commons cost like for the amount of gems on the hundred dollar gem pack, the commons cost two dollars. The uncommons are three dollars, and it gets you like the whole playset, you know, like so. Um, the rares are 
five dollars so like spend five dollars and you get like all your amaras changed and everything and then the mythics are six bucks like two three five and six So, if their Seraph die, like they they can't activate Arch yet because they're they're one short. But if like if I would attack, and have the Seraph and trade with the Seraph, they would get the two tokens from the Seraph, and then their Arch of Orozco would be turned on. It's kind of weird, Cry the Carnarium with Seraph. I think they'd want like Golem Demise or something, so do their things don't get exiled. I don't know. Yeah, like Golden Demise. Like, if they're trying to ascend anyway. I don't know. They can do their thing. So if I go Huali minus on the Spellbreaker, we can give it Trample and make it, um, so 6, 7, 8, 9, so make it a 13, 13 Trampler. And let's say they, let's say they block that and give it Death Touch. They probably can't because that's 13, then this is 19, then that. So we basically need a removal spell at that point. Settle doesn't, they can't settle us and they can't use a removal spell on the Spellbreaker. So yeah, let's let's go for the win here. They basically need to kill they need to kill one of these knights and then block the other knight. If I'm this song's hero, what does that make you? From the will of many, the might of one. Spellbreaker's clutch. Pumping it up, like, you know, with it having the hex proof, it's a real clutch. You don't have to worry about, you know, like a, a cast down or whatever. There at one. I'm keeping this spellbreaker in hand in case there's a Kaya's Wrath. I must concede defeat for now. Ugh. They go to three and then they play the stupid blocker. All right, so they're not dead yet. But at least we get the Growth Chamber Guardian out of here. Now they, they do have the Memorial to Folly where they can Folly back like Seraph and play Seraph. Looks like that's what they're doing. Okay, okay they're just gonna get that thing back. That's fine. They're at two. This gets plus two, plus two. Ugh. I'll put him down to one. Never mind, not fine. I did not have the mana to play the other Spellbreaker. At, at the time, during combat, my opponent Assassin's trophied me and gave me an extra land. I didn't have mana for another Spellbreaker. They're so close. 
But it looks like maybe I should have just ticked up the Huatli. Because if we just tick up Huatli, we get to ultimate Huatli. And then we certainly win this game after an ultimate Huatli. So I, I got too aggressive there. Use, use, that later. use Huatli's minus to try to kill my opponent. And they had everything they needed. They had the instant speed removal spell, which they had to, otherwise they were, they were dead. Plus they had Kaya's Wrath, which they had to, plus they were dead. Plus they had a blocker after the Kaya's Wrath, which they also had to have that, or they were dead. Still winnable. We need to draw March of the Multitudes. Oh yeah, probably even higher than 95% of the time we would have won that. That was like their last cards had to be those specific things. They had to have one instant speed removal spell plus one Kaya's Wrath plus one, which we don't even know if they they're even playing Kaya's Wrath kind of thing. Nothing plus one truly lost. blocker to play after the Kaya's Wrath. <laughs> that had like they had to get all those exact things. For like their last cards, and they had them all. Wow. Yeah, if they, w if they just would not have, if they would have just not gotten the Assassin's Trophy, they may have just thought, okay, I got, I have my blockers, I'm safe, we don't need to go get the Assassin's Trophy. If they would have just not done that, then I would have been able to, yeah, we, we drew the Huatli. Our Huatli would have killed their things. Of course, we don't know if Huatli was on top because the Assassin's Trophy did shuffle our library and take a fish. land out, so we don't know if we were going to draw that. Sometimes even destiny is wrong. You may regret that choice. That's very fair. If we didn't go for lethal, they could have trophied Hawali. That's that's a good point. Their trophy would have killed Hawali if we didn't go for lethal. That's true. No, not a short day today. Still started stream at 3. Um, we had a, a deck, but we... Had, no, this is already this is our fourth deck we played today, like normal. The computer just crashed during the first deck. I, I just don't have it up there. Our opponent's playing some weird stuff. So tower defense is great against Cry of the Carnarium, but not good against Kaya's Wrath. Why are they playing all these sweepers? They have sweepers and Liras. Seraph. Ugh. What am I doing here? How do we win this? I just don't really like anything in our sideboard, basically. So I'm just going to try the game one plan and hope it works. I'm, I'm expecting them to have more Cry of the Carnariums here after sideboard. 
I'm gonna try playing one tower defense over the Shauna. The Shauna is not good against sweepers. They have a whole lot of removal. So yeah, I mean, just while we were playing the first deck of the day today, Simic Aggro, or uh, Simic Climb, uh, the computer just uh, crashed. I think it was some some error with maybe the RAM or something, and so it just went on to the next deck. Hey, Hardstyle. No big deal. No big deal at all. We just restarted the stream and everything. Just restarted Let's the computer, restarted the stream. Fool. My strength is our strength. No big deal. Well done. The crowd is yours. Poor Huatlis. I don't think I just play March right now. I think I wait. Hey, Mr. Previously. Kind of rude. Make way for your captain. Make your captain proud. So am I attacking them or am I attacking this Vraska? Play Spellbreaker here and then Tower Defense and kill the Lyra. And then on Tap and Flourish. Tower defense is clutch. I can't kill Lyra anymore. I'll be taking that. Okay, with this thing gives gives reach. But tower defense still pretty clutch. Hmm.
Block there, block there. Take 15, 16, 17, 18. Dang. My crew is the finest in the seas. Well, tower defense was definitely better than Shauna would have been. It's this Vraska's killing me. We need to draw like a Conclave Tribunal Take for the Lyra no right prisoners. now. Or I don't know, something. Or another march. Not just three lands in a row. Are you kidding me? We're playing 22 lands in this deck. How are we drawing no both mercy. these games? We've had like 10 lands. Or whatever. Well, now I need Tribunal just to, to take the Vraska now. Brask ultimate kills us. Four lands in a row in our 22 land deck. Ugh. Yep, sometimes you're not meant to win. But no, they... That is a... Somebody asked what's a bad matchup. <laughs> we found one. An Abzan deck with main deck Cry the Carnarium and Kaya's Rats. And Lyra Dawnbringers. And like the planes are like just everything they have. A bunch of assassins trophies too, for my planeswalkers. That was brutal. Oh, that's what I get for no Huatli avatar. Why didn't you say that earlier? Oh, I need to get the my Huatli avatar. Oh, I wish you. Oh, I forgot about Huatli avatar. My bad, my bad. It's like mono blue. If we try to use Flourish to kill Vraska there uh, earlier, we just don't have any gas to win the game. We, we need the Flourish to be able to win the game. In a, in a perfect world, I would have liked to save the flower till after Hero Precinct 1. But... As you can tell, I did not. I don't know, maybe I should have. We just play the Clifftop Retreat tapped last turn, and then we untap. That's the problem, is if we don't draw another land, we're just untapping and playing our two mana playing hero, and we'd have to wait till like the very next you know, and we don't hit and we miss a land drop, we'd have to wait till turn four before we play it if we didn't draw a land there. So is this, is it Drake's? Or is this actually Grixis? I could see Ritual set here if this is a Grixis. Yeah, it's, it's likely is it Drake's, though. Who boy. Guild Mage's Forum. Gonna have to start using this for my... in my niv Mizza deck.
That card looks really good with Electromancer. Yeah, that forum looks looks great there, making this Electromancer a 3-3. I can't get through it. They want to just make their Drakes X5s instead of X4s. Huh. That's a that's a pretty sweet innovation there. That looks pretty good. Remember whenever we only had two lands and I had to use the flower to try to get to a third land? Just drawn four straight lands. You draw like a Conclave Tribunal. Something that's not a land. Should have just held this flower flourish. So yeah, two best cards for us to draw here would be either Flourish or Tristani. Those are our two best. Flourish or Tristani? Not a fifth land in a row. <laughs> oh yeah, or either of our Huatlis. Yeah, both of our Huatlis would be awesome as well. I'll take either Huatli. Or, yeah, I mean, Tribunal's really not that bad for the Drake. I mean, we have a lot of really good draws. Okay, our, our draws are getting a little worse. Now with our Spellbreakers gone. Okay, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Do I attack with Amara? Definitely attacking with the two four threes and all these one ones. I'm attacking with these five. It's just whether or not I want to attack with Amara. Yeah, why not? So they're down to 11. We basically traded Amara for two one ones there. Just turned Amara from being a two two into two one ones because, and an extra point of damage. Because if if I don't attack with Amara, they get the Electromancer blocks one of these one ones. They're at twelve. This one one's dead, and we just have the Amara, which is not you know like this one one. So Amara <clears throat> dealt one damage and trait and turned into two one one creatures instead of being a two two. I think that's a fair trade. Especially when one of those 1-1s one -ones has a lifelink. That's useful. Great draw. Great draw. <laughs> hey, Slurm, happy Friday. 
Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not planning on ever switching to bow ties. All right, here come the fiery cannonades. Let's get an extra tribunal. Um, tower defenses. Stop fiery cannonades. And then if we play those, what are we not playing? I think normally my Huali's aren't necessarily that good of draws in this matchup. I don't know if I really even need a Harpooner. <clears throat> At least not like this Huali. So if we take out this Huali, cut our five mana spells, um, cut a Shauna. This is 61. I'm going to turn my Legion's Landing. All right, here we go. Do you think Mono Black with Red Splash will be viable in the next season? Um, it's too hard to say. I, you know, I don't really know what Mono Black with a Red Splash really entails and everything, and it's kind of too hard to say right now. We'll have to kind of see what, you know, what what happens and everything. Do you consider a monocle? No. Hey, DJM, happy Friday. Like a mono black Judith. I don't know. I I feel like. War of the Spark is going to have a really big impact on Standard. And I think that it looks to be really, like, a really powerful set. And so... Looks to be a fun set to, to build around as well. And so... Yeah. Basically, what exactly is going to be, like, the best decks and everything... I don't know. I think it's I think it's going to kind of change though. You know, like moving into uh this next this last one. We knew that like knew that like Golgari was still going to be good. It turned out Golgari turned into Soltai. Um but knew that was still going to be good. Knew Esper was going to be good with Esper getting Kaya's Wrath and Mortify. Especially Kaya's Wrath though. So history is a better card for me to play here, but I just don't really want to shock. And I, I don't mind them using. Speaking of shock, I don't mind them killing, shocking this Amara with me having another. Yeah, I'm. I'm look. Yeah, I can't wait to hear more about the story line also seeing what happens you know with bolus has like this trap for all these planeswalkers is that trap going to be successful you know we talk about how bolus has been planning this for you know thousands of years or whatever something like that and he's got to already have everything yeah i guess so bolus killed niv mizzet uh they were saying that the thing about these extremely smart, genius dragons... You see, my strength is our strength. Uh, ...that they don't like other really smart dragons and stuff. And so, yeah, Bolas killed Niv-Mizzet, but Niv-Mizzet had, like, planned on him maybe getting killed and left enough, like, clues or whatever or instructions or something like that for... The people of Ravnica call to that passion? raise Niv Mizzet from the dead, I guess, and now he's reborn. No, I I think no. Th My I think they said in the, the story today that Bolas killed. 
Niv Mizzet, right? I thought I read that in that story that that they had that they described the Niv Mizzet card. I mean, I just clicked on it over here. Yeah, Bolas struck him down. See, so it says, when we last saw Niv Mizzet, he wasn't doing so hot. Bolas had struck him down after all. There's only room for one hyper intelligent dra dragon on Ravnica. So I guess that happened previously. That was when we last saw Niv Mizzet. So that must have happened in, in like the Guilds of Ravnica story. It says, but there's a funny thing about hyper intelligent dragons. They're usually pretty good about thinking ahead and preparing for every eventu eventuality. Niv Mizzet had laid out clues for others to build him back bigger, stronger, better. Three. My strength is our strength. That's this article right here. Their card preview for t from today. Every journey has obstacles. So when they said the last time we saw Niv Mizzet, but there was nothing there was nothing there to describe that? Hmm, interesting. Definitely don't really like seeing this crackling Drake. I don't think we can really win this. So I could make, so I make one of these things a 7-7. Seven, seven. And if I do that, then Arclight Phoenix kills Watley. Either that or, seriously? I like just started talking about this. Either that or we tick up Watley, goes to 5, 10, 11. Watley goes to 11 loyalty. We still attack with the 5 because we need to make sure that we survive. But then Huali's at 11 loyalty, and then we're most likely able to ultimate Huali. Yeah, like, we're, we're attacking either way. I think, I think we minus. Well, that's worst case scenario. That was the problem with minusing. Instant speed removal. Hey, what's up, skinny fat man? I don't know, like, Huatli Emblem... You know, it does mean that, like, our, our creatures, like, replace themselves and help us dig further. So many shocks. We're not winning this. Those phoenixes were really good. They're really annoying trying to protect my... Trying to protect my Hwatli. All right, I'm off the Whiteley plan. Let's have Harpooner instead.
All right, good hand. Good hand. In the midst of war, of war of the spark, Nicol Bolas laid Niv Mizzet. However, Niv Mizzet had been preparing for entry. Oh, okay, yeah. Wait. And he laid out the clues for others to build him back. As he returned back from the dead, he managed to divert the Elder spell to himself. What? Where was that at? What does that even mean? Come on, there you go. So he managed to divert the Elder Spell to himself. What is this Elder Spell even? What does that even mean? What was the Elder Spell? All we know is like this Elder Spell is supposed to be something that's really big and whatever. Was that supposed to be the thing that was supposed to kill all the Planeswalkers? Oh, that was an that was a fake article there. Oh. Please don't have cannonade. Okay, a Planeswalker week where we build a deck around each of the, the Planeswalkers. Like each of the 36. Like, even the uncommon ones. I mean, we're, we're just going to be doing that in general. Of, like, around all of, like, the other ones that are, you know, decent. There is a card in the set called the Elder Spell. Cool. I'm kind of surprised that there's that that red mythic. I thought that's where like the elder spell would have been. That new red mythic from today. Uh, finale of promise. All right, Mike says maybe not the uncommon ones. Yeah. Okay. So the elder spell is what's supposed to drain the planeswalker sparks. It's what is. It? Supposed to make Nicol Bolas a god. Finale of Promise is said to be Niv stealing slash using the Elder Spell. Man, I can't wait for this book. Definitely getting that book when it comes out later this month. I already pre ordered it off Amazon. Story sounds sweet. So it was not lethal if I would have played Spellbreaker. We would have hit them down to two by playing Spellbreaker. As long as the opponent doesn't find Cannonade, we're pretty good. Every problem has a solution. Choose wisely, because the other one's going bye bye. Yeah, our deck was much nicer to us this game than it had been recently, where we've been drawing so many lands. Drawing history of Benalia back to back those last two draws that was really kind deck thank you very much um I can check my Amazon to see what the book is I can link you to the book
I don't know exactly what it's called. It's called Ravnica Magic the Gathering War of the Spark. And then there's also, and so then it, it releases April 23rd, so in 11 days. Yeah, I got the, the hardcover one. Uh, for that. It's also like another... Another kind of book. So, Esper Control. So it's like it's like a two-part series. Like there's that one. And then there's another book by the same guy that comes out in November. November 5th. That I just linked here. Called War of the Spark Forsaken. Written by the same person that comes out in November. I don't think it's a leak. I don't know. It's just the, the same person. You know, you can pre-order another book by that same person on Amazon called War of the Spark Forsaken that doesn't release until November. There's also a visual history. There's a Magic the Gathering Rise of the Gatewatch, a visual history book that comes out in July. And there's a link to that. All right, so Esper Control. Let me just play a bunch of Cinder Vines. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, Hawk, I didn't mean you have to come over here. Cutting the Shauna. And I don't know. All of our cards are kind of good. I don't really see anything really to cut. I think I can get go down on one Tristani. Maybe one flower. That's 61. And... March. Ugh. Yeah, Conclave Cavalier may not be that bad in this matchup. Costs four mana. Not easy to counter. Um, you can find the mono black aggro on my stream decker page that I just linked right there in the decks. I I don't know. I've I've never read anything by that art by that author. I hope it's well written. Also, I mean, he's got a a good review on or like a good description on Amazon um, his career in television and comic book spans decades after starting as an editor for DC where he also wrote Captain Captain Adam he created and developed Disney's original series Gargoyles later writing the Gargoyles and Gargoyles Bad Guys comic books he's also worked as a writer producer story editor and voice actor on Sony's The Spectacular Spider-Man and Warner Bros young justice and as a writer and executive producer on the first season of star wars rebels his comic book writing credits include dc's young justice star wars K 
Fanon, Marvel's star brand and Night Mask, also wrote the original novels Reign of the Ghosts, Spirit of the Ash, and Foam, as well as World of Warcraft novels, uh, World of Warcraft Traveler, and World of Warcraft Traveler, The Spiral Path. Um, he is blessed to have an amazing wife and two fantastic grown-up kids. So it sounds like he's written some things before. So it sounds like they're going to be pretty well. Uh, the best way, so another question, what's the best way to start with the lore? I'm not sure, <laughs> honestly. Um, there is like a, like this site basically has all of the, has all the, the stories basically. Yeah, that, or mtgstory.com is that is that the same thing as that site? I think it's kind of best to go by plane. You know, if you want to like hit go to like the data bank, go by planes. You can read the, the story for the different planes and stuff. Magic Origins is a kind of... I think Magic Origins has good, good storylines with... Um, you can... Five of the planeswalkers, you get to know, like, their origin stories. Like, where, you know, like, how they got their sparks and all that kind of stuff. And, like, their first stories of... With Jace, Chandra, Liliana, Gideon, and uh, Nyssa. I, I've read those. Those are those are all really well written. They're just like short stories, uh, kind of you know, like they're not that long. But you can find all those online. So no plays there because I thought that my opponent was going to be leading up with the Kaya's Wrath. Let's go with the Tristani. We, we are, have a backup Tristani. We know it resolves. That's a big thing that it, that it resolves. Hmm. They, don't see it to be, they don't seem to be much in the Kaya's Wrathing mood. One point short. If they do have Kai's Wrath here, I would have like six haste. I want to play hero. Oh, right. I always forget about that. I always forget that Spellbreaker protects from Settle. Yeah, 
Yeah, they have absorb here. They absorb the cinder vines. That's annoying. Cool game. Yeah, they had a little bit of a budget version of Esper there. Had a good amount of guild gates. Then we saw, you know, they had murder. You're jumping around everywhere, Hawkeye. Okay. Yeah, Hawkeye's loving the camera tonight. He can't find anywhere to settle down. What do I think of the Firemind Vessel? Not playable. Much rather have Chromatic Lantern. Or Gilded Lotus. Is like, if you want to go bigger. Mulligan. All right, let's find some early stuff. Ugh. You're good, Huali, but you don't come down till turn five also? I mean, they're at five cards. What do y'all think? Should I keep this? Still won't have a turn for the first five turns, but assuming we're both just kind of not really doing very much, Tristani can stabilize, then Huali can win the game. All right, y'all are saying keep. We are playing a Huatli deck, right? Why am I get r getting rid of that? And also, how are y'all not reminding me to change my Huatli avatar until it's way too late? I don't like this opponent. All these things add light. Looks like Simic Nexus. I don't like Civic Nexus. All right, Mono Black Aggro is finally up on. Finally up on YouTube. Okay, so play this. Attack. So if I go haste to deal 20 damage, like three, three, six, nine, twelve, where if we go Four, it's zero, four, eight, twelve. So it's the same after four turns, and then it's just better after that. And we're not like this spellbreaker is kind of doing all the damage. Ooh, that's a good card. Take that. I have not reset the computer at all today. Or like reset arena, sorry. I've not reset arena uh, since we, you know, got back in here. We've been streaming for five hours. Here. I should probably do that. So 
But we miss out on five points to cast the Conclave Tribunal. You know, miss out on the five points there. I think that's worth it. Four cinder vines in the sideboard. Those are going to be like our important sideboard card here. We know our opponent already ditched one root snare. Come, show me what Sing you're the song of. of fame. They ditched one to Inescanta earlier. And they're a little ways away from flipping this Azkanta. There's a, a new card. Bond of Passion. 4RR. Oh, so this is a, it's a, a cycle here with these bonds. 4RR. And it's Boros and Gruul. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste. Bond of Passion deals two damage to any other target. Wow. That is not a good card. Make active trees in cost that much less. Make it cost three more to deal two damage. My strength is our strength. Their strength is your strength. Bunch of strength around here. We're showing strength. Good job, Dirk. Made mythic, way to go. Stop top decking these Nexus of Fates. Ugh. Looks like we're dead. So I did take out the, like I was just talking about, we did take out the crushing canopies for these Conclave Cavaliers to help against aggro. It makes this matchup worse, not having those crushing canopies in there, unfortunately. Is Radiant Champion better than March of the Multitudes? No, I like, I like the instant speed of March of the Multitudes to be able to play on their turn. I like that. Um, so is this is this what we're going with the sixty? I'll play one radiant champion over the one of these legions landings. <laughs> Nexus isn't a problem at all. It's Wilderness Reclamation. Like, this this would not be a deck at all without, like, Wilderness Reclamation. This is a huge problem. Just use Nexus as the win con. But Reclamation just does ridiculous things. You, know, you have that Team of Reclamation deck, too. Just does completely broken things in Magic. Like, having that much mana available in Standard should not be, should not be a thing.
We don't need to swear though, we dog. I know it's frustrating. No, I keep on not not paying attention to Lazav's sword. I keep I keep on like doing other you know like looking at other things, doing you know something else. Like whenever it comes up, I keep on forgetting to look. So would Legions of Landing been better than this Huali? We would have been able to play it on turn one. It's just like a 1-1. One, one. doesn't, you know, even though we played on turn 1, it doesn't present a whole lot of damage. We would have dealt an extra 2. We would have dealt 2 damage so far with it. Let's go with the march and step. War boss for the sideboard? Don't think it's too necessary. Why do they get so much mana? They get 10 mana. I should mulligan if I don't have cinder vines in my my hand. I don't know, my hand was kind of slow. It was kind of just Amara and nothing else. Wow. I didn't attack with Amara, making. Um, oh, I guess. Yeah, I guess I should have attacked with Amara, because it just makes the token anyway, and then we'd still, still have it for three. Yeah, it still would have just been the same. So I could have just dealt that two damage. Hmm. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14. So Huali minus is not lethal. Close to lethal. I don't mind that, though. So Spellbreaker can be lethal next turn. Just attack here. Yeah, I should have dealt that two damage with the Mara last turn. Good. 
looks like. It looks like they don't have a whole lot, which is good. I do have to Spellbreaker here, though, to present lethal. So that's annoying. All they need is one more land to turn on Archer Veraska. That works. So we know their card's not a land. Best card for them to find. I guess Nexus is the other best card. So we're down to three mana. So they they block Spellbreaker. We have one, two, three, six. We have exactly lethal. Is there a reason to play March of the Multitudes? Like, do we need that extra one for something? I guess if they have if they have a bounce spell, though, they could bounce the Amara or the Spellbreaker. Well, they can't bounce the Spellbreaker, but they could bounce the Amara. And the March doesn't really help. We need to draw Cinder Vines. Cinder Vines is our card we need to draw. Cinder Vines... Okay, we're still in there. If I could do some work. They get nine spells now. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So their plan is just to make a bunch of biogenic oozes. That's not going to be good enough. That's their plan. It may have been like, I, I may have just tipped them off by playing the march, but I didn't want the march to get countered. I may have just tip them off by playing March here, because how they added GG with the with the two lands, that could have been their plan of just making biogenic oozes, and then we would have surprise killed them. But still, with having the Cinder Vines, um, they just can't cast very many spells. All right, Cinder Vines, good job. Yeah, usually they have like ooze or Krasis. Um Ooze is usually a sideboard thing. Usually main deck they have like Krasis or even sometimes just the... Sometimes they just play some Frilled Mystics. Um, and kill people with like the 3-2 Frilled Mystics kind of thing. 
when you like basically their win condition is just taking all of the turns when you take all of the turns in the game it honestly doesn't matter what your what your win condition is when you take every single turn all right cindervine's opening hand i like it you know what let's get two yeah let's we don't need to let our opening hand off the off the hook so easily let's get two cindervines yeah, why ask for one? We can ask for two. Ugh. Okay, well, maybe I should just ask for one. I don't think this is a mulligan, though. Amara into Spellbreaker with the Tribunal. Looks pretty solid. Alright, another land. Land or Cinder Vines? I like the, the Tribunal draw, though. I like that draw. Alright, no Ascanta. That was a, not a draw I liked. I want land. So, I could just tribunal this as Kanta. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. We know the tribunal's not getting countered. Just get that as Kanta out of there. Don't let them fix their draws. Man, I am so bad about that. You're right. I should just attack for two and then do that. We could have dealt another two damage there. That could be could certainly be an important point. Important two points of damage. It's the second time I've done that. I want to go landing plus tribunal or just spellbreaker attack. This tribunal could get countered here. They're countering, they're not casting Chemisters in sight. Not ideal. So I did miss two points of damage earlier. We'll see how much that hurts us. These March and Tristani draws have not been good. Could really use Cinder Vines. If we get another turn, that is. I don't know, with 
both these insights and stuff. We may not get another turn. Hey, goats with the resub. Thank you so much for that subscription. Third sub of the day. Y'all are awesome. Thanks, goats. It's a great way to support the channel. This is, you know, my full-time thing that I do each and every day. Um, if you're enjoying the stream, like to help support me as a full-time streamer, considering also hitting that sub button, just like goats did for the fourth month in a row. You get access to all those awesome emotes. I put in the chat there. Good call, Raptor. Got to change the avatar after this match is over. Even though it could be too late. This, if we lose this, <laughs> if we lose this, we're done. So it could be too late. What do you want, Hawkeye? Looks like we're gonna lose this. We'll see though. See if our opponent bricks. Just have so many cards. All they need, so they need root snares and nexuses. They have so many cards. They have the the insights and these memorial to geniuses. They get to pop also. Yeah, I think we're dead. Alright, tapping out so we don't have to click OK to every single little thing anymore. Quality of life upgrade. Still have to click OK to Nexuses, which is annoying. Like right here, like revealed. It's like, yeah, just saw that. I wish they got rid of that, that revealed thing there. <laughs> And there's a card that will kill us. So maybe if we just don't have Cinder Vines, we mulligan. Like we had a really, like we had there, we had Amara on two. We had the ability to cast Spellbreaker on three, but we had two Conclave Tribunals. So, you know, we had like the Conclave Tribunals. If we had a Mara, Spellbreaker, Tribunal, Tribunal, and lost. It really doesn't get much better for us than that, except for Cinder Vines. So, like, it's kind of, yeah, so maybe it's just, you know, got to have Cinder Vines or, or Mole kind of thing. Or at least, like, take your first mulligan. You know, and then, you know, with the six-card hand, if you have, like, the fast start, just try the six-card hand. That matchup was worse for us than what it was before. As we talked about it, I tried to make our deck a little better against Aggro by putting in these Conclave Tribunals and took out Crushing Canopies. You know, it would have been nice to have Crushing Canopies as another uh, enchantment removal spell there. Um, yeah, they just should not have... <laughs> say they should not have made Reclamation... Untap lands with activate abilities. Should have just not made Reclamation. That's just not a card that needs to be designed at all. It's just not a necessary card to print. Oh well. Um, so, another 3 2. Not so bad there. Um, yeah. 
That's it. Um, if you want to play Huatlis, you know, like these two planeswalkers that don't get to see a lot of play. You know, not a whole lot of people are playing uh, the two Huatlis, especially Huatli Warrior Poet. We've seen some more people with Selesnya tokens start playing Radiant Champion these days, but not many people play these two. But they are pretty powerful, and they're, they're good, and, and we got to use both of them uh, this league. <clears throat> got to play the Huatli for the minus X ability and make our opponent not block. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, another solid league for Naya Huatli. All right, so if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But thanks for watching some Naya Huatli, and I'll see you for the next video.